This video is going to go over getting set up with NES and FNA. There's a, a, a repo here that makes setup super easy. So it's the FNA VS Code template repo. It's uh, under Prime31 on GitHub and has a couple prereqs. So you'll need uh, either Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. Uh, recommended to go with Visual Studio Code on this one because it has uh, some extra build scripts available, uh, but it does work fine with standard Visual Studio. Um, right now, this is most likely Mac only. I haven't tried this uh, in Windows with the new Bash stuff, so it's possible it'll work, but uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I have no idea. If anyone wants to give it a shot and report back, feel free. Uh, so you need model game, which is required for compiling content with the pipeline tool and also just uh, for doing the initial build. And optionally, you want to have .NET Core installed, which is used for compiling T4 templates. And uh, you can compile effects actually right on Mac now if you use uh, Wine and the DirectX SDK. And if you follow this link, there's a, a little uh, description on the setup of Wine and installing the DirectX SDK. All right, so let's get to it. So you'll want to not clone this. You're going to want to actually download the zip. So you, you don't actually want to clone it because uh, you don't want to have uh, a, an actual Git repo in here. So let's go to a new finder window here. And we're just going to unzip this. And we'll just rename it FNA VS Code for now. So First things first, open up a terminal. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is run the get FNA script. So download FNA, yes, download the FNA libs. So FNA has some requirements where it will uh, download some native code libraries, uh, SDL and a couple other bits. So this will take care of downloading everything for you. It's gonna extract everything exactly where it needs to be. And It'll basically get everything all set up for you. So the other things this script does is it checks to see if you have .NET installed. And if you have the .NET command installed, it will install the T4 templates as well if you don't have that, because it's a, it's a .NET package that it's being used. So first thing you have to do here uh, interactively is enter the project name. So this is what uh, is going to be, it'll rename your project to have, uh, to have whatever name you put in here and it'll stick it in a folder with the same name. So what this is doing now is it's fetching NES and it's actually going to set up a Git repo for you simultaneously and installs NES as a sub-module. So once you get to this point, you'll see that uh, a little thing that says a build command was copied to your clipboard. So I'm just going to paste. And what that's doing is it's just running a new get restore on the NES project so that it, it can download the dependencies and it's just building everything for you so that uh, it has the, the NES uh, pipeline DLLs all built and ready to go. So everything's set at this point. Okay, so once we have that all set, we can, if you're using Visual Studio, you would just open up this test project right here. If you're using Visual Studio Code, then you can just open the folder directly. So this will pop open Visual Studio Code, and you'll see there's three projects in here. There's FNA, which is the full FNA source. There's NES, which has all the NES source, and then test project, which is your actual code here. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the build command. So if you open up the build menu, which uh, command shift B opens up, these are the available commands for building. So right now we'll just do a build to make sure everything's functioning. So it's just going to use MS build and run through, and it'll compile everything for you. And once everything is compiled, we have all set, no warnings, no errors. So what we can do now is process the T4 templates. So you see there's a couple T4 templates included and it'll, it'll stick the output in this output folder. So one of them is a content path generator and the other one's just a, an enum equality compare. This is useful if you wanna use uh, an enum in, as a, a key for a dictionary. This uh, lets you just uh, st stick in 
any type that you want here. So this is a, an array of strings. So whatever the type is that you have for your enum, just stick it in here and it'll spit out uh, an actual comparer here. And you pass this to the constructor of a dictionary and it keeps the dictionary from boxing. And the other thing we get is a content path generator. And this just makes a static class of all of the content that we have in our project so that we can uh, not use strings everywhere. You can just directly use the content class. All right, so getting started. We have the game class here. And all the game class is going to do is uh, set up a debug listener so that we can call debug log. And it's going to start up a NES scene. And then this is optional, but this is how you get the IM GUI stuff going on. You, uh, you just create an IM GUI manager and register the global manager. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the build commands here, uh, Command Shift B. And we'll just do a build and run. What this will do is it'll run the MS build on it so it builds all the projects make sure everything's up to date and then it launches the executable and here we go so you can see we have uh, the NES game window over here and then IM GUI windows are all around here so this over here on the left the scene graphs the most uh, useful here so this shows all of your different entities that you have in the scene and this is a tree view so if you have nested entities like transform set parent it'll show these all in a tree view so I'll just uh, double click this so you can see what one of the inspectors looks like so double clicking an entity opens up one of these and you can see it has all the properties of the entity and then all of the different components. This one has a transform and a sprite. So we can see by enabling disabling it changes things and you can drag these to set the values or you can also double click and manually set the values. And you can just play around with it in, in real time here to see what your different uh, effects are on here. So you can flip things, basically any of the properties that you have available in any of your custom components will also show up here. There's inspectors for uh, various things like uh, booleans, floats, vector2, vector3. You can change colors in here with the color picker and all kinds of other goodies. Okay, so over here is the Nezcore settings essentially you can uh, you can these are the, the global settings that are all on on the core uh, object and you can change these over here you can turn to bug rendering on and off nice and easily and change the different uh, the other various settings this is a little graph of your fps so it's you know it's pegged at 60 here and if we come over here you're going to see this is your im gui window with a button and this is just a, a demo in here. So that's on, on a component here called demo I am GUI draw commands. So if I open this up here, you'll see it has a prototype sprite, which is this little guy here. It's just a, a square sprite that you can throw on an object for prototyping. And it lets you adjust its skew and stuff. And this is the actual demo component that is responsible for creating this. So let's take a look at that. So popping back into the project, the scene that it's loading up is called default scene. So let's go to that. So this is the default scene. It just uh, has a couple basic little entities in here just so that there's something to look at. It loads up the logo and that logo entity that we saw. And here's the, the demo uh, component that is actually responsible for the IM GUI that we saw. So let's take a look at this. So this is how you would actually stick a component. Uh, any of your components can can register to draw IM GUI windows. So what we do is in on added to entity, we grab the IM GUI manager, which is a global manager. And if you remember, we started that global manager up here. And you can register a draw command, which is just a function that you want to pass to it. And when you're removed from an entity, you want to remove that. So you want to unregister your draw command. So here's where your IM GUI commands would go, right in here. So you can see this was your IM GUI window. And if we go back over here, you can see here it is. So some of the other things that are available in here are in this game view tab, you can resize and reposition it. So this lets you size it based on the back buffer that you have set for your scene. So you can just click on these various things. And this has uh, like docking, so you can easily dock it. 
and the window is also uh, you can resize it by just dragging the corner here and it will keep the aspect ratio the same as whatever you set your uh, your back buffer to so you can change themes here so just clicking these you can run through all the different themes that are that are in here and if anyone has a creates a theme they want to get it popped in just let me know and we can stick those in so this scenes drop down over here if you had more than one scene you can actually uh, just go to it and select your your different scenes so that you can uh, very quickly navigate your game and this quit I am GUI what this does is it actually just removes this manager completely and now there's gonna be times where you don't wanna play your game view all small like this what you can actually do here is in the window menu you can uncheck separate game window and what that does is it it resizes the NES back buffer to be the the full size of the uh, the screen here. So that's a nice handy way to to go full screen and toggle that. And then this lets you turn off the other windows as well. You can toggle all the windows here. And uh, this is a really handy one. This demo window. What this does is it opens up the I am GUI demo and I'm just going to change the theme back to the default one and uh, this has all of the different widgets available and lets you run through here and see all of the different things I am GUI has available and what you can do is reference back to the I am GUI repo so it's a it's a quick way that you can learn about all of the different options that are available and grab code for it and there's a bunch of different examples in here that you can pop open and take a look at All right. So that's about it in here. Okay, so jumping back into VS Code, let's uh, let's again have a look at the build commands available here. So if we do Command Shift A, we can see all of our build commands that are that are built in. So you can see there's a, a build effects here, and what this does is if you have any uh, FX files in this content folder, as long as you've uh, installed the DirectX runtime uh, that you saw in the README. When you run build effects, it'll run through all of your effects and build them in preparation for working with FNA. And the other thing we have in here is uh, access to the pipeline tool. So if we click this, it'll pop open the mono game pipeline tool. And you can see we have one piece of uh, one, one uh, PNG in here. So this is where you would add your content. So this works a little bit differently than a normal mono game project. So we have two different content folders. What we have is uh, the regular content folder, and this is where you put your raw PNGs, your raw AUG files, or any other files that you just want included in their raw form. So anything that you want to run through the Mono Game Pipeline tool, you would put in the compile content folder. So that lets you go in here, and you can use the different NES inspectors, or the uh, different NES pipeline importers for tile maps and, and all the other goodies. And you would just go in here and just say add existing item or folder and set them up and anytime you do a standard build in here it'll actually uh, take care of running the the uh, content processor on the content that you have in there so anything that changed will be automatically updated now if you wanted to you could also force rebuild the content and you can see what that does on here is it just runs through and force rebuilds everything so you'll see everything listed here that it built so it rebuilt the logo Okay, so that's about it for the main features of this. This is the, the, the quickest and easiest way I can come up with to get people jumping into NES and playing around with it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Thanks for watching.